So how does adsorption work as a separation process? Well, you have a mobile phase and you have a stationary phase. The mobile phase is either gas or liquid and contains two or more components that you want to separate from each other. And the stationary phase is a surface of a solid that interacts with uh, one or more of the components. And then you have these active sites uh, or an active surface property that makes these uh, components interact. So in this case we have two components, the red circles and the blue um, blobs here. And the thing is that these components should adhere to a different degree to the surface. And you see these blue blobs here are shaped in a similar way as these acti active sites here. So they have a tendency to stick, while the re red circles here can't stick to the surface. And then you get a shorter residence time for the, the red uh, substance and longer for the blue that can stick to the active sites. And thus you can separate the two components from each other. The adsorbent uh, is typically a porous material. Uh, and the porous material could be silica, zeolite, so that's alumina silicates, the thing that you actually have in washing powder typically. Uh, active carbon is another thing you can have, or polymers. Um, you can have a gel consisting of agarose or dextran or something like that. So how do you choose? Uh, well, you choose uh, a material that has the right kind of, kind of activity for the separation you want to have. So something that interacts, right? Uh, but you need to put it into this column somehow. So you could have small porous particles. The benefit with that is that then you get a large inner area per cubic meter of particles, and thus you get a high adsorption capacity. But you also get a high pressure drop. Imagine uh, trying to push something through a cylinder packed with sand or a cylinder packed with gravel. It's a lot easier to get it through a cylinder packed with gravel instead of sand. So then you might want to have larger porous particles, uh, but if you do that, you get small inner area, or smaller at least, uh, which gives you lower capacity, but then with the benefit that you get a lower pressure drop. There's always a limit to how, how high pressure drop you can have. If you have too high pressure drop, you can actually get the packing to crack. So you get uh, not cracks necessarily in the porous particles, but between them so that you don't get an efficient packing uh, or packing that works. There are several different mechanisms and we will just say adsorption and don't care which kind. Uh, so it could be ion exchange, where you have a charged surface and a counter ion that is, is exchanged. You can have hydrophobic surface, which then absorbs organic substances, uh, so nonpolar substances. Uh, you can have a hydrophilic surface that absorbs polar substances uh, in water, uh, for example. Uh, you can have something more specific, and then we talk about affinity, uh, some kind of chemical bond between uh, the mo molecule and uh, the adsorbent. So you have a specific target molecule. Uh, it could be an antibody, for example, that binds to your protein if you have a protein separation. We should note here that we are talking about uh, uh, adsorption used in chromatography. But there is one uh, separation method that is a bit special, and that's size exclusion chromatography. Because in size exclusion chromatography, you don't want to have any adsorption at all. Uh, we will come back to that in a later video. Let's take an example uh, how this can look. Uh, to deionize water, uh, you can have ion ex anion exchange and cation exchange. So first uh, you can put this hard water that contains calcium ion and chloride ions uh, through an anion exchange. What will happen then is that these chloride ions 
will change place with its uh, absorbed hydroxyl ions and out you get only the calcium ions and hydroxyl ions instead. And in the, in the next step you can then have a cation exchange where the calcium ions here change places with these hydrogen ions like this and out you get di uh, deionized water. Is there a problem with this? It could be. If you want to take away uh, salts from a protein, uh, so then you have protein and this calcium and chloride, for example, what will happen here? Well, when you exchange the chloride ions with hydroxyl ions, you change the pH. And then when you exchange the calcium ions with hydrogen ions, you change the pH again. And that could be a problem for proteins. Uh, it could be in, mean that they change their shape irreversibly or that they clog together or whatever. So that could be a problem.